Hello, welcome to my channel. I hope you're doing very well. A few days ago, Point Blank Music School published a really good video that showed how to do a four-tet sort of style sample manipulation that used the sampler device in Ableton Live and it modulated the sample start point with an LFO. I thought it sounded great, so I fired up Ableton to try it and I couldn't because my basic version of Ableton Live only comes with simpler, not sampler, and that doesn't let you use the LFO on the sample start point. However, I've got pigments and I thought that's got a sample engine and it allows you to uh, modulate pretty much everything and sure enough the process is exactly the same and it works perfectly in pigments so I thought I'd show you how to do it. So what we've got here is just an init um, patch of uh, pigments. First thing we want to do is turn off the, uh, the wavetable and utility engines and turn on the sample engine. Um, next stage is to drag a sample that we want to work with into um, the sample engine and I've got one prepped here, simple as dragging it in and now if we play a key on the keyboard we'll, be out, we'll hear pigments play it just as a normal sample playback type thing. Just some little electric keys there. So what we want to do is, is basically get this to play in a choppy, rhythmic kind of fashion. So the first step to do that is to go to the sequencer page and turn on the arpeggiator. Um, and we want that to be at 16th notes for this example. So if we um, go back to the synth uh, page and pr uh, press a key again, you can see that the, the, um, the arpeggiator is, is triggering the sample playback, but it's from the same point every time, which is not what we want. We want it to jump around and play a different part of the sample every time. So the way we do that is to go to the LFO page, and we have this is the control that sets the start, uh, sample start point. To set a modulation on this, we just click the little plus sign next to it, and we're going to use LFO1 to modulate it. And the way we set the depth of that modulation is to drag this control up to 100%. And now we can see that the sample start point is moving backwards and forwards to this sine wave of our LFO. Now we don't want that, we want it to jump around to a different point in a more unpredictable manner. So we're gonna to go to the waveform control down here and drag it all the way up until we get to sample and hold, which is a random um, kind of clock division or pulse, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and we can see here that it's doing what we want it to, but it's doing it too slowly. We want this to run at the same speed as the arpeggiator. So we go down here to our rate control and we click on the little arrow, and instead of being on hertz, we want to sync it to the clock. Um, and it's moving to the clock now, but it's moving too slowly, so we just drag up to 16th notes, and we can now see that it's, it's running at the same speed as our arpeggiator. So if we go back to keyboard mode and press a key, we can see that we're starting to get the sort of thing that we want. I can hear a couple of little, let's just press hold so it stays on. I can hear a few clicks in there, so I'm just going to add a little bit of attack. Yeah. That sounds nicer. So we can see this is kind of getting to the sort of territory that we want it to be in. Um, if we go back to the sequencer page, um, Pigments allows us to dial in some um, randomness to various different things. We could do that to the gate. So we get slightly different gate lengths, which may or may not work, depending on what sound you're after. And then if we go to the effects page, we can dial in some reverb, sorry, some delay. And we're starting to get something that sounds a bit fortet here. Um, obviously, this is just a demo. But you get the example, I'll get the idea. This is exactly the process that um, Point Blank demonstrated in live. Um, it just means that if you don't have the most expensive version of Ableton Live, you can still do it um, if you've got pigments. And for my money, pigments is the best soft synth. I absolutely love it. And this is just another reason to have it. As a synth, it sounds brilliant. It's sample manipulation, sample playback stuff is brilliant as well. Um, so if you haven't got it, it's definitely worth thinking about. Um, and I'll link to the point blank um, video in the description just because I explained the process better than I did. I just wanted to show that it was possible in pigments. Anyway, I hope that was useful. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.